Alright everybody, welcome back to the Mofa project. Um so yeah. Um let's get started on this. Yeah. So yeah, today we're gonna be working on this Mofa project, so uh don't mind me if I need yeah, there you go. Easy. <laughs> so uh the first thing we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be making sure that we have uh, this part over here fixed and this part over here fixed so that's the idea so that's what we're gonna be doing uh, we need that we need different kind of gum there you go and we're almost there oh hey Becca nice to see you I hope I did not keep everybody waiting for that lo uh, for too long so uh, yeah, today we're gonna be working on this, and then to uh, I hope I will be done by t I will be done for t uh, once I'm done here, I will be done for today. Uh, so if I'm done with this color, I can then finally go to continue with the next one. The idea of this color is that if I'm done with this color, I can actually go pretty easy working on a different uh, project. I realized that I need a I need this color. Uh, well, because apparently every project has the same layout, so if I change here the brush and I go to a second project, I will have the same I will have the same brush, which is quite annoying that it doesn't uh, remember the preset of colors or where I have been la uh, left. But and, you know, it happens. So yeah. Today we're going to be working on this, and uh, hopefully we will be able to get everything done. Well, all the red stuff, of course. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Eating is important. So yeah. Um. Today I actually had also food. Uh, it was actually what was it called? Meat. I have no idea. It's rice with broccoli and uh, uh, so uh, and so soya, uh, soya, uh, yeah, soya meat. There you go. It's a uh, it's a it's some meat that uh, it's like um, soup, yeah, soup meat that you're normally u meat, uh, <sighs> runs meat that you actually use for in the soup. It's very it's very tasty, but it is a little bit uh, you know. It takes a long time to cook, and uh, then you know you combine it with some couple of a uh, couple of ingredients and sauces. Uh, you get this uh, s uh, sweet taste that is a little bit bitter um, of uh, sauce, and we are actually calling it zuurvlees, which actually means you know meat and it's soya. So yeah. It's very creative wording there. Just, you know, soya meat. So the idea here is that I'm working on this and hopefully, you know, I will be done for t I will be done with this color today and then we can then finally work on uh we can then finally work on the second color, but the main problem I always face with uh once hopping to colors is that I'm dependent on this circle right here. So uh after I'm done with this, finishing this color, I can then tomorrow I will be able to c continue drawing on the other projects as well because I don't have to rely on this color anymore because this color is really tricky. And I mean it, it's a really tricky color. It's uh, one of the most trickiest colors I ever met. So hopefully that will be fixed. So, yeah. Um. Uh, what am I wanted to say anyway? Uh, so today we're gonna be working on this, and hopefully I will be done by the by tonight. Oh, hey, Jen of Salami, nice. How are you? Wor oh, how am I doing? Well, I'm doing great. I'm working on the Malfa project. I am now working currently on the uh the first wing and fixing the colors on it, so that we finally can continue working on um the full wing part. Hopefully after it, uh, hopefully after this col uh, after these colors that have been implemented, the whole damn thing will look nice. But you know, it it takes some time to do it. 
Also, it is really hard to do this. It's uh, one of the hardest thing, like, uh, hardest thing to do, because it's just you know the little tips that need to be need to be done instead of uh, the full the uh, full picture. But yeah, I have been currently uh, gentleman salami. I actually have been done doing stuff. I have been improving on my art. I have been improving on you know drawings. I have been improving, and I'm very happy that I can see my own results happening. That doesn't sound right. That sounds correct, right? So yeah, I am trying. I'm getting better at this. I'm getting better at drawing. I'm getting better at coloring. I'm getting better at creating drawings. So I think that's double, but eh, it's different. So yeah, improving on my art style. Improving on my art on my second art style. Improving upon how to use shades. How to use lighting. And eventually, you know, I will get to the part where I'm doing it correctly. Or while doing it great. Ooh. My head went a little bit uh, south. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I have been working on it. And uh, I hope you guys are also doing well. I'm trying to do my very best upon getting everything fixed and everything done like a normal person would. So, yeah. This call, this drawing might be taking more than a month. All right, fine, that's true. But the good news is that this drawing is a very good representation upon how how to learn stuff. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good product to see from uh, from where I need to go to. Like for instance, if I want to create something and I want, I, I would like to create and put my art style, and I needed like, and I had zero experience. I would have come up with something very different. Normally, you know, I started with this, alright? Th this was my start. This. Beautiful little droids. Shooting at each other. Like pew pew. That that was my art back in the day. Once I was, uh, when I, once I was six. And then afterwards I started drawing dragon... Dragon stuff. So I was drawing dragons and lizards and all that stuff with eyes. And which also works, trust me, that works. But it was not detailed. It was it was just you know a little bit this and that, and then you know rah, the rah, you know that that kind of that kind of feeling. So yeah, the the idea of you know how to how to get the how to get from you know that to this is important. But I also need to make sure that I improve upon my other art style because that art style is actually also a very Handy dandy because I'm not very good with you drawing humans and uh, well I'm getting I'm getting the hang of it and I'm very happy upon that. I'm very happy that I got the hang of it. Well, it's not fully finished of course, but hey, it's a start. It at least doesn't look like a hairy monkey. I'll tell you that. I might can I can might even can um, if you guys want I can show you an example of that. And trust me. It's not a good, it's not a pretty looking one. If I believe I have it even. My, uh, come on. I need less from this. Yep, thank you. So, yeah. Hopefully, you know, once this all is done, all, all these things are fixed, I will be able to do mine. Uh, I will be able to do everything. So, yeah. Um, where I started with drawing humans and how far I got already, I'm very, very happy that I got already that far. An example of a hairy monkey, yeah. That's indeed a thing. Allow me to just see if I can find it in the uh, in the images. If not in if it's not in the images, ah, there it is. Lovely. There you go. That was my first attempt at drawing a human boxer. Well, it turned into a monkey and then, you know, yeah. We don't talk about this. This this is how I draw. This is how I draw when I draw humans. And I'm very happy that I went away from that kind of human drawing-like-ish. Because holy hell, that's some ugly monkey. I'll tell you that. So yeah, um... It's the idea, you know, of getting better at yourself. 
getting better at everything you make, getting ever, uh, getting better at improving yourself, improving upon your art style, improving upon everything you see, and uh, creating emotions in your artwork, creating emotion, facial recognitions, um, creating movement, whatever you need to know, uh, it's all important. Everybody likes, you know, stationary art, of course, but, you know, it, it's always important if you draw a human that you have facial recognitions into it, like fear, uh, happiness, shyness, whatever, 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 whatever the brew is brewing, but it's all important, otherwise, you know, the art doesn't come to life that good. And, you know, it's really shown in most of the arts that I've been do doing these days, that I'm getting better at it. Even though, you know, I'm a very bad person when it comes to emotions, I normally cannot even see them. So, hey, you know, I'm getting the hang of it, understanding what people's faces look like when they do an emotion. Oh my. It's like it's like uh, psychology lessons all over again. And trust me, trust me, those I had. I had psychology lessons. The funny thing is actually that I had those lessons back in the day, and of course people don't know that because you know nobody knows that I'm that I did such a thing. Uh, no, come on, that's not the wing. Uh, I need wing. I need a wing tree then. Wing tree close. There you go. Easy. So yeah. The idea of you know having uh have uh, having you know uh l learning how to do emotions yeah emotions can be really tricky I know but uh, the idea of emotions I I learned a lot about emotions and how they uh, how people react on emotions and how how to start a conversation how to be nice to people how to talk to people I learned that all in uh, at school. There was a teacher back in the day where I w uh, when I was doing my you know casual business of you know learning for my diploma that I have, and that man was actually working for the for uh, a banking company, and he teached us all about how to create how to create social co uh, how to create social contact, and how to get a how to get a conversation to your kind of levels. So, I would say that was more like positive manipulation. Yeah, that's the word. That's the word I'm looking for. So this man actually told us how to positive manipulate somebody's conversation to get to your kind of conversation. Because, you know, it's really hard for people to understand your kind of conversations if you don't able to bend the conversation towards your will. So, we're going to be talking about this, instead of we're going to be talking about that. We're not going to be talking about ponies that can fly, alright? We're going to be talking about bricks and buildings, yes, that contain bricks, and how many bricks there are. So, yeah, um, that man teached us uh, how, to get a conversation how to get a conversation started and then bend it towards you, so that you have a nice conversation with them. Even though you know they are not the one, they are the ones that not started it. You started it by saying hello, how are you today, and then you know you start up your whole conversation. You're gonna reference, uh, you're gonna reference the important stuff that they want to hear, and then once you're done with that, you're gonna try to bend the conversation towards your idea what you wanted to say. So like you wanted to know about more about how they do their cooking well you're gonna be first saying how they how that how their day was and then they are gonna be talking about how school was and you realize that there was a strong a strong connection uh, on that part of school the word school so you're gonna re reference school again and you're gonna say like oh school yeah um did you saw the homework yesterday and then you know you're gonna talk about that it's quite funny that the uh, Certain things like that are, you know, important for a conversation to go flowing. So you want to keep on with the conversations. You want to keep on. You're technically doing it, but yeah, we're going to be talking about bricks. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, that's that 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 is what I, that's why I did it. It was a ridiculously uh, ridiculous combination of things, of you know, conversation combining. But yeah, the main idea of the uh, positive manipulation is that you change the subject of what what they are talking about. If it if they're talking about rice, no, you want to talk about pancakes. Well, fine. You're gonna try to slowly and progressively to work towards the pancake part instead of working towards you know whatever you were planning so yeah it, it it's a quite magnificent thing that you can do it and that guy actually teached us a lot about it how to do it how to keep on with it and how to make sure that people are okay with it how pe uh, how to get people talking about it and uh, well you know not being a total ass or a total party bummer because you want to talk about beer and everybody is a wine fanatic for instance something like that so yeah it's quite it's quite nice to see that such things can uh, that such things can uh, that you can learn such things like you know having a decent conversation about it so yeah um i hope i hope this is totally not too confusing for you guys but yeah that's what I learned on a school. That's what I learned on school. I uh, I learned how to I learned how to talk to people and how to get information out of them because apparently that was important. So yeah, uh, of course you know practice makes perfect and uh, practice I always try to do, but nowadays I can because eh, there are some things that are troubling, like you know not be able to make contact at all. And it's important to see the emotions and facial expressions into people if you are going to be doing the uh, talking bit. Because if you're going to be referencing just straight up words that you're going to repeat straight up words, it will be seen like, what? Why are you repeating my words? They don't have emotions in it. And then, you know, you don't get the conversation up and started. Which is the main problem. So, yeah, um,. In the meantime, of course, we're just casually, you know, drawing the feathers upon, or the red part of the feathers upon the drawing, because apparently that's important as well. So yeah, uh, that's what I learned, and I'm very happy that I learned it, but you know, it takes a lot of time before I will be able to do it. Do what you may ask, well, you know, be able to talk again uh, to people by that way because it's a really really easy way to get this conversation start even though you know you might not f the worst thing is I don't feel like there is a conversation I'm just trying to give up like mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get that you know satisfaction of you know hey I am doing a conversation no that's not my satisfaction it's like oh you're talking about that well that doesn't interest me oh that doesn't interest me either uh, I'm a very boring person <laughs> when it comes to talking. It's like, ah, yes, you want to talk about something. Well, uh, allow me to show interests, sort of, ish, maybe, depends, situational. It's not that I'm going to be showing no interest. I'm just going to be showing interests because I need to, I need to have a conversation going. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's strange how my brain works. It's very strange. Normally I would not uh, say like, you know, oh, you're having this beautiful conversation. Well, no, technically not. I'm not having a good conversation. I'm just trying to get to what I wanted to ask in the first place. Because I don't see such things as important. Apparently they are important, by the way. They are very, very important to get a decent social issue. So yeah, I break under high tension, so then I cannot use my magical ability of, you know, Conversation talk, and then you know I break. Then I, then you see like oh, he was a phony all along. How dare he? How dare he tries to manipulate me into talking about his business? How dare he? So yeah, yeah. Of course it backfires. Um, of course it backfires. So you know then you need to catch up your game. It's like oh shit, I'm almost breaking. All right, well you know it's nice to go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Something like that then happens. Ah. Uh, it's always fun to see. So yeah, um, 
So, how was everybody's day going today? Because I had a I had a blast. I watched some anime again. I did do the I walked the dog again into the ice. So, yeah. Anyway, actually, you know what? Let let's talk about music right now. Let let's talk about something that is quite understandable. So, I always feel like every single time I hear these stupid people trying to get a conversation going or talking about you know something very un something very not right. Uh, so I mean, like you know. You know that money grows on trees, you know, that that kind of, uh, not right, just, you know, total ape, ape bollocks, in know, uh, ape, ape shit, there you go, total ape shit. And then they are trying to convince you about why this is bad, or why this is sad, or why is this, you know, a thing. They're trying to convince you that, you know, all this stuff is very bad for you. And all, all this stuff is very good for you, and you should feel bad if you don't agree with my terms. The, the quite funny thing is, they always use this sad piano soundtrack. It's like, oh no, I feel so sad if you are playing that piano track. I should feel sorry for you right now. And that is exactly what they want. They want to guilt trip you to oblivion. I feel like, you know, it has been terribly overused already. Most uh, most casual videos that are about these kind of nonsense are always having this sad, 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 sad soundtrack. Yes, I said it too many times, I know, but hey, you know, it's a very sad song. So yeah, walking the dog uh, and bullied a, a Russian. That was a good. <laughs> What's bullying a Russian really? Oh, that's so sad. You should feel bad about that, you know? Think about his vodka, think about his wives. How could how could you live with it? how could you live with yourself able to bully a Russian if he was just drinking today? Anyway, yeah, the piano music is uh, one of the most annoying things on the internet right now for me. It's like, ah, oh, stop it with the piano bullshit, please. I'm just trying to not listen to you guys, and it's always the same. It's always the same. Every single time you see such a nonsense video, and if a person is reviewing it, even they, even they got tired of like, yeah, I don't need to tell you that there is a sad piano song playing in the background, isn't it? Nope, you don't have to tell me. I already know it. She's funny to bully. What? Why would you bu why would you satisfy with bullying? Uh, uh, you're just gonna be spooking her, isn't it? You're just spooking her and you're allowing it like ha <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know. Whatever 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 is good for you then at least. I hope it lifts your spirits. I hope it lifts your spirits, Becca. Bullying a Russian. Ah, <laughs> worms. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, let I am so in the uh, geez, I am so in the what the hell I need to talk about because holy hell, I don't know anymore. It's so it's so annoying that you're trying to do something and then you know you're working on this and then there is nothing to complain about because it's all about drawing rat parts on a wing. Accurately, ah, B C D F K. Yes, that's that's how it goes. The alphabet. There you go. So, um, let's do something else then. Ugh. Well, 
the main the main pro the main problem I always have with this drawing is like uh takes so long to get things done, takes so long to get the time done. And then once you want to do something very quickly done, it's like, oh, and I'm out of time already. So once the motivation kicks in, I'm always too late. I agree on the piano music though. If you're gonna if you're gonna use music for a tone, it shouldn't be obviously annoying. <laughs> Obviously annoying. Today was a sad day. Little Timmy did not cross the road. You know why? Because there was a car coming and he watched out for it. Yes, it's such a sad day. The rain is even sinking into the heat. So sad. So sad. So yeah, the uh, the 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 whole the whole thing about you know this so sad idea is so. Overdone. Ugh. Anyway, so uh, what I'm gonna be doing today is uh, I will show you guys what I'm gonna be doing today. Look, ooh, I'm showing you it right now. The <laughs> it's red, all right. You're coloring a part of the feathers red, and then you're gonna follow it up with another color. Yes, this color is going to be representing the the a little bit darker part of it. But before I can do that, I need to make sure that I have everything, every part of the wing or the top part of the wing uh, of the feathers red. Why? Because I need to make sure that I have consistency in my feathers, and therefore I need to do this. There you go. A great explanation why I'm trying to do this and why it's so fucking hard to do because it's all the same thing. It's the constantly the same motion. It's find a feather, fill it in in the top, find a feather, fill it in, fill it in to the top, find a feather, fill it in to the top. And eventually, you know, we are, we're going to get there, eventually, but it just takes some time. <laughs> Music is such a great tool to create ambience, but don't be a dummy and clunk through some bad piano because it's sad. Yeah, yeah, true. You know, music can really lift your spirits if you if you if you use the right m amount of music at the right time. It can really lift your spirits. It can help you think. It can help you improvise. It can help you create new thoughts. It can help you uh, give your world an imagination. It can create shapes. It can create a lot of stuff. And all that stuff is relatable. All that stuff is relatable. The problem is people really like to use this kind of music just to get their way like I want to show you how sad it is and then you know the sad piano music is playing with the sad little kitties in the front even though it not, has nothing to do with the conversation at hand even though the conversation is totally wrong and their you know opinions are wrong because all they said was not it was not true or they, they created a fake a, 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 a or they created something that is actually unreliable. Therefore, it should not be taken uh, it should be taken lightly instead of heavily. And that makes the whole damn thing of using the piano music bad because it's really annoying when you're having like this 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 you know story about this person and then you know you realize that the whole story is wrong. It's like, uh, all right, so in the end. Everything you said didn't matter, and I had to listen to this sad piano music, even though it's not sad at all because it did not happen. Oh, tank, thanks, 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 person. So yeah, and I feel like you know such things, such tiny little things in the world could actually make a fine difference if you if you did not do it like that. If you just picked up something else and picked up a different. If you if you had like a decent argument and you had a decent and a decent case, then yes, you should be able. To. It creates this effect that you know it it creates annoyances, and the annoyances can go really far. Like I mean, it's so annoying that you know you're listening to this conversation and then you realize like wait, they're talking about they're talking about eating eating cake makes you slim. What? And then you know, that's apparently a thing now. And uh, 
it's sad to say that such things now exist. I wish we can go back to the, you know, normal information. Just information and opinions that really matter. Like, for instance, you know, science. It's a very important thing. And in science, you need to have proof. If you don't have proof, then your whole statement is wrong. Because if you don't have proof, it might not happen. Because, you know, it has been tested that it is not. it cannot happen. Because, well, that's proven. Therefore, the statement should not matter. The outcome should not matter. Because you already know that it doesn't happen. Or doesn't... Is not gonna be happening. I saw, for instance, I saw a, a documentary about uh, Hawaii and uh, how Hawaii could ha could cause a tsunami to uh, New Orleans. All right. The funny thing is, such tsunami it could have happened. It could happen, but it's very unlikely that such thing could happen because uh, the land of Hawaii is actually falling apart because of all the rust inside of the inside of the building materials of the uh, of the shape of the uh, uh, yeah the shape of the island. So the Hawaii the Hawaiian is very unstable uh, will get unsta more unstable uh, because of all the water inside, and that's going to be rusting, and then you know cracks are going to be appearing. The idea is that there is going to be a huge slip of slide of uh, slide of land that's going to be sinked into the ocean that creates the tsunami but that can happen but it is a very unlikely chance it might be a little bit by little bit by little bit which also causes problems yes but i don't think that a whole damn landslide could happen if such thing could have happened if such thing will happen you know you don't know, but it's very interesting to see that such things might occur, but they are not re they are not assuring. The only thing that you know is that they might occur that they will occur, that landslides will occur, but they will occur most likely more commonly just bits by bits. Though that might be big chunks of bits, but they not they are not ridiculously the size of a whole country going into into the ocean kind of bits. So yeah. Yes, you're right that those such things could occur, but it's very unlikely that a whole damn fucking country is gonna go sinking into the water uh, into the water because of the size of a country is going into the water because of this. I think uh, what what is more reliable is like you know. Bits by bits, it's going down because that's how erosion works. You're creating cracks, and those cracks create more cracks, and those cracks create more cracks. Eventually, you know, the cracks will uh, the cracks will give away one of the parts. So yeah, that's how science works. And if you're going for the ridiculous amount of science, then yeah, uh, then you're wrong because because it might not even happen. And then you know the opinion of you know we have tested this yes it could have happened but it is such a unlikely chance that we will that it will happen that you know it doesn't happen and so if it appears then well whoop de daisy fucking do it uh, it happens it happens and uh, people are and they these people were like oh yes we need to find out if it is possible and it's like what is your answer? Yes. Will it happen? Probably not. Well, thank you for your documentation about it. Of course, it's interesting how, you know, everything works and you figure out how those how landslides exi how landslides can can be created and all that stuff, like with rust and all that uh, all those things inside of the stones. Because it's all built on volcanic ash. Of volcanic rock and volcanic rock is very brittle towards water and so that's why it's easily shaped but yeah um, uh, so yeah that uh, that's my idea that's my thinking about it and that's how I view it and I hope you guys you know well you don't have to agree with my opinion here but uh, it's just, you know, my opinion, and I had to talk about something. 
and we went from coloring, we went from coloring to music to music to whatever that was. <laughs> Geography, yeah. Geography. There you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy life. So yeah. Um let me just double check. Oh then. Oh we still have twenty minutes twenty five minutes left. Oh that's easy to do. So yeah, um the most important kind of talking, right? Talking about how landslides occur and how such landslides can cause something like a tsunami. Which is true. If a, a large amount of rock is falling into the water, it's gonna create a wave, and that wave is gonna be, you know, creating a vibration, and the vibration is gonna be carrying on to over the sea, which then creates this huge wave. But, just because it can be created doesn't mean it's gonna be happening. And that's, that's always like, the fun thing about these uh, documentations is like, Oh my god, these documentations are so realistic. No, they are actually not. They only tell the facts and most likely they are going to be saying no, it's not going to be happening or it's going to be less likely to happen. So the only thing you're going to be lo uh, uh, watching is all the science behind it and all the, you know, things. Squeezing lemons. Mmm, lemons. It's one of my favorite food. Back in the day when I tried to order, you know, iced tea, I always eat the lemons. And everybody is looking at me like, how the fuck do you eat lemons? It's like, I don't know. I'm hungry. Give me. So, yeah. Um, let's, let's, like, the documentations nowadays are really bad. Trust me upon that. So, we have, like, History Channel. And History Channel is really terrible. The uh, amount of garbage that has been produced on History Channel is uh, oof. A very big giant oof. There is nothing that the only time there is gonna be history talking about history it's gonna be in in May. And then the rest of the, the rest of the year there's gonna be only talk about aliens and uh, how to sell stuff. And I'm utterly like what? I am not here to read about a bloody damn how to sell a lamp from the 1920s for ten thousand dollars because some idiot wants to buy old stuff. That's uh, that's not my history channel. I want to learn about you know the great wars in in the Roman time or how how uh, how you know alexander uh, alexander uh, Ale alexander the great came to power or whatever something in those things are related to history not aliens that are building stuff or oh my god this is a ufo this is like the first time we saw it in 1852 it's like uh enough with the nonsense already i am not here for the nonsense i'm here for just you know doing my job and that's listening to good stuff so yeah um the main the main the main the main problem of that the main problem of history channel is those things those little things you know the things that can are not history and you want to listen to history? Well, too bad. You're gonna listen to a man who's gonna be selling his old pee bottle for twenty dollars. That's that. That's history right there. Pee bottle selling. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's sad. It's really sad. The same thing goes for you know, Natural Geographic World. It's already showing tendencies of, hey, you wanna see a doctor from the American soil? doing his job on a wild channel where you're telling me I need to watch pets getting treated and cows getting treated and you wanna see and and that is wild hmm hmm oh boy 
You know what's wild? An inhabitant. You know how the giant anteater, uh, how the gi giant anteater walks and behaves, and you know how a crocodile hunts and how a crocodile lives, how an ostrich uh, protects their children, and how an ostrich, uh, a group of ostriches lay their eggs. Such things are important. Such things are important to a wild channel. It has to do with wild. It doesn't have to do with. Oh yes, my cows are getting slaughtered today because, uh, you know, they got the big giant. They got a big giant maggot in their tummy. Yeah, that that's definitely not. So, could you please help me with this kind of thing, boy? Yeah, that uh, that's a. Uh, I know this was a terrible accent, but terrible farmer accent. But hey, you know. I'm just gonna give you a quick example of what the hell happened. Like, yeah, I don't need to what I don't need to have to see a vet working on cows. That's not animal wild. That's not why I watch wild. That's not why. Why is this wild? How? How is a cow getting ill wild? And it's like, Ehh! and everybody looks like. Yeah, we don't know. We just want to have more viewers. But hey, you know, keep on watching this, and then probably you're gonna see an elephant uh, in uh, two year, uh, in uh, twelve hours. All right. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a little bit, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous. It's really ridiculous upon that part. That accent would. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very sad upon to see how that how that went. Well, that looks good. Love it. Ah. So I did forget. Oh well, you know, there's always now. There is always now, now. So yeah, um, it's a really sad thing that you know such you know um, such certain kind of type of TV uh, channels are like this. It's like, I don't want to watch a farmer treating his cows for the winter, giving them shots, because that's not very well. That's not what I wanted to intend. I wanted to watch monkeys bite each other, or want to see monkeys fight over territorium. I want to see fish, you know, doing their mating dance, whatever. I want to see piranha. I want to see piranha. Uh, piranhas in a natural environment. I want to see big giant turkey beef, uh, turkeys fighting over their uh, over their mates for the mating season. And I want to see elephants just you know doing their casual thing, finding water and all that stuff. I want to see a hyena laugh. I don't want to see a cow getting its you know vaccine for cow sickness. That's not very uh, wild. That's that's the opposite of wild. That's like, that's ordinary farmer day. That's ordinary fucking farmer day right there. So yeah, um, you probably already noticed that I did not, uh, that I did definitely. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, slow on drinking. I need to get some drink. I need to get some water soon. But uh, yeah. Being not able to see wild is. Uh, very bad. I uh, I must admit, it's such a shame that you know such series uh, or such channels want to just go for the money and say like, yeah, we need more audiences. Well, you don't get audiences by watch letting people watch farmer t TV series of how to become a doctor of you know farm animals. It's it's not. It could be good for Natural Geographic. Which is true. Natural Geographic. On Natural Geographic, I have no problems that they show that. But I have a problem with them showing it. Well, technically, I also have a problem with that on Natural Geographic. What I want them to do: only show it on Animal Planet, not show it on Natural Geographic Wild, because the idea of Natural Geographic Wild is that you're going to see wild animals. You're not going to be seeing 
cows, horses, sheep, and pigs. Oh no, not the pigs again. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's really problematic upon that part, and I really, really don't like. Uh, I really don't like that what they did. And the main problem with Natural Geographic uh, is that they don't even show volcanoes or how a volcano is made or how the earth works. All that stuff, nah. We're only gonna be showing today, we're gonna be showing that you're gonna get that car for $20 and you're gonna make a profit out of it because some idiots uh, bought, some idiots sold it for $20. That's that's nowadays Natural Geographic. That's uh, I'm selling cars and I'm gonna sell my building and uh, all the stuff that's inside of it and I'm gonna make a profit out of it. It's like, yeah, I know little Charlie here. He can help us with getting more money and uh, well, you know, big big Earl is gonna be helping us with uh, repairing this stuff so that you know we're gonna make uh, lots of uh, money out of this and then you know we're gonna go for the cars. Yeah, the, it sucks so much. It's like, you wanna, normally, back in the day, we had History Channel talking about history. We, ha we had, you know, we had Natural Geographic talking about volcanoes. We had science, you know, talking of science. So, Natural Geographic science, if I'm correct. Or, well, Discovery Channel. Yeah, Discovery Channel. And Discovery to Channel talking about science. And nowadays, it's all about, you know, selling those sweet-ass products of you know garbage to other people's garbage and then making money out of that garbage or you know pimping up cars apparently that's the thing now apparently pimping up cars is now what natural geographic is supposed to be and yeah discovery channel actually died out and then uh, Discovery Channel uh, got replaced for Discovery Science and most of the times it's not about science but about aliens and I'm like, what? No, don't talk about bloody damn fucking aliens. I want to know how the fucking sun works, you piece of shit. So yeah, it's it's so sad that such things uh, that such things exist. It, uh, I just wanted to watch my old damn shows. I wanted to see how things work, how things are made. At least that show is still around. How things are made. Sadly, not with the same announcer, but hey, you know, it's at least something. But yeah, it's important that such things do exist, but not on a channel like that. I don't want to see 24-7 how somebody pimped his car and makes a fortune out of it. It's uh, it's far too overdue. Alright, uh, let's take a look at it. So yeah. How late is it? Oh, 50 minutes. Alright. And did I do everything? Yes, I did. Alright, cool. So, um, today we finished up, finally, we finished up all the rat stuff. So we finally finished up the rat. Maybe a little bit here missing. Um, I'll be... Ah, I missed some marks here. Oh well, I'll fix that. So yeah, there you go, easy fix. So yeah, today we finished up the coloration of our beautiful birdie here right now. And then uh, tomorrow we will be finally starting with the second part, which is going to be the darker part. I am gladly that I'm done with this part because now I can actually use the simple... Uh, I can then tomorrow I will be able to use the... Um, yeah, tomorrow I will be able to use the darker part to color in the wings a little bit more. And eventually, you know, we're gonna get to the. Uh, eventually, we're gonna get like the till. So we're gonna have this effect here. So that's the effect that we're gonna be going for. And to get that effect, we actually need to go for the darker part. And then we are gonna add up the darker part, and then the lighter part, and then we have all the things done. So yeah, um, uh, that that's it for today. I hope you all have been enjoying, and thanks all for watching. And I hope I'll see you all next time. Until then, I wish you all a lovely day. And bye.